Do you need to know how to pass a coding interview? In this video, I'm going to be giving you some of my best coding interview tips. So make sure you stay tuned to the end because at the end, I'm going to have a, a wrap up of what I think is one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you as far as passing a coding interview. What's up? My name is John Sanvez and I am the founder of simpleprogrammer.com and today we're going to be talking about coding interviews. In fact, leave a comment below right now and, uh, and tell me if you've ever had a problem with the coding interview where you failed the coding interview or some kind of embarrassing story. I've certainly had my share of them. I got into Microsoft. I've had Microsoft fly me out and I didn't even make it through half the day because I really didn't know what I was doing and I shouldn't have been there and I wasn't ready for the coding interview and I just bombed out horribly. It was just a very embarrassing experience and not something that I'd want to repeat, uh, but you know what? I learned from that and what I'm going to share with you today is some of the things that I learned from that because I actually went from being very bad at coding interviews to being very, very good. But I'm gonna give you some tips here that are gonna help you, uh, first of all, to, to pass a coding interview. The very first thing that you need to know about passing a coding interview is that it is going to be a series of algorithms, okay, and data structures, right? That most of the coding interviews, like the questions that they're gonna ask you, those hard questions, are gonna be those, and there's a finite number of them. Okay, so uh, there's there's actually a resource that I'm going to recommend to you that's going to help you with that, and that is Interview Cake. Okay, I'll put the link here. Click on the card and uh, make sure you do it. Go check them out for sure. You're going to want this. Trust me, this is the best resource there is. There's also a link in the description. Uh, so you're going to want to go check that out because they're going to help you to pass those interview questions because here's the thing and this is the big tip here there's only a finite number of data structures and algorithms and combinations of them okay and so even though it might seem overwhelming like there's all kinds of questions they could ask you about how to how to sort a string or how to reverse a string and how to find you know which order that node should be visited in the tree and all kinds of stuff like that okay or you know how to create a stack and how to you know what happens can you write an algorithm to insert into a linked list all of these things are variations of just a few combinations of things and, and there is a different uh, decent amount of these things but once you know them Okay, you can answer any question. And I can tell you from experience, I became really good at a site called Top Coder uh, where they did these kind of coding interview type of algorithm type of, of questions and I really sucked at it at first. But after studying and after becoming good at this, I realized that every single problem, the very first thing I do, I do when I solve the problem is figure out what type of problem it is and I already know how to solve that type of problem. I just have to take the, the variables and, and what you know what kind of variation of this is on this exact type of problem and bam you start to get fast at this stuff so that is tip number one okay which is study the finite number of data structures and algorithms second tip i'm going to give you here okay this one's important as well practice there's nothing worse than getting up and having to write something on the whiteboard or being in a coding interview where they're asking you to code up something and you know the information but you're nervous okay and so you fail if you actually practice on the medium that you're going to be tested on it's going to help you a lot trust me so what does this mean okay in practical sense it means that you're actually not just studying these problems but actually doing the problems but it also means that you're doing them under pressure and you're asking someone to test you so if you're going to have to code on a whiteboard have someone do a mock interview with you and give you some coding questions and have them time you and have them do it on the whiteboard and act like an interviewer. I know this seems kind of silly. I know it seems like something that you could brush over or not really do, but if you invest the time and do that, that is going to make you better because you're going to perform under that pressure. Okay, you, you need to do these kind of mock interviews. You need to actually practice this stuff so that when you're under pressure, you can do it. One of the big secrets in life is that if you do things enough, in, in a simulated environment that's as close to the real thing as possible, when you're actually under pressure, you're going to perform a lot better, right? This is what is, is key. This is why a lot of famous athletes, they have a process that they follow. They do mental rehearsals. They go through this process so that they when they get up there on the stage, when they get up there and have to 
perform for that Olympic medal, they've already done this so many times, it's routine, and so they don't have this element of newness attached to the pressure that's already there, and they are able to perform at their best. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is this. If you don't know something, don't try and fake it, don't try and BS it, okay? Ask intelligent questions in order to, to, get, to get an answer uh, in order to learn. Okay, one of the things that interviewers, and I know this because I've been on the other end interviewing people, one of the things that interviewers are looking for, and in fact, I think that I saw an article where Google, where someone from Google that was an interviewer was specifically saying this, is that we don't expect people to get all of these problems right, but we care about their process, how they solve the problems, how they think about that, okay, and what kind of questions that, that they ask. So part of this, you know, I'll kind of combine this into tip, we'll just go right into tip number four because they go together, is think out loud, okay? Writing something on the whiteboard is great, and if you solve the problem, great, but if you mess up, what's gonna count more than just getting the problem right, and even if you get it right, is the process that you go through, the thought process you go through to solve the problem. That is what is gonna determine whether or not an interview, interviewer knows that you're competent analytical person and who is a good engineer that they want to have on their team, right? They don't want someone who just memorized the answers. They want someone who is analytical, can break down problems and thinks about them, and is able to solve problems in a systematic way, has a good thought process for discovering the answers to things, right? If you just memorize a bunch of problems, it, it's good, it's going to help you, but what's more important is that you understand things, okay, and that you have the ability to take a problem that you've never seen before, to break it down, to analyze it, to say, okay, well, this looks like this problem and this part and describing step by step. So those are the big tips that I have for you. There's obviously more. And like I said, the, the big thing that I'm going to recommend that you do, that's going to help you. If you're looking for help with coding interview, for, trust me, I've been on the side of this. I, I know the founders of this company, Interview Cake, and I've gone through the program myself and it is it is stellar it is it's definitely something stellar it is an affiliate link i'll tell you go ahead and click that card there because i believe in what they're they're producing and it, it it's effective so many people have have utilized it and have told me how effective it is that's a big thing is that like you need to have that training okay and you need to find a good resource on it i'll give you an, a, a secondary resource so that i'm not being totally biased here like i said i've got a plural site course but it's not even as good as the, the, the interview cake as far as specifically on coding interviews, right? They're going to prepare you for those algorithm problems and give you steps and understanding of that. But a second one I would give you, uh, we'll put a link to it as well, is Cracking the Coding Interview. That is a book by Gail Chapman. It's one of the most popular books on this topic for a good reason. It has a ton of problems in there, right? You probably won't need as many problems. That's why I think interview cake is probably a better resource because it's interactive and it coaches you through them. It's, it's not cheap. It's, it's definitely has a price tag attached to it uh, as opposed to just a book, but it's going to help you a lot more. So that's my biggest number one tip that, that you don't want to miss is, is get some help. Get some help doing this, okay? And if you know someone that can coach you or train you, that's great. But using another resource like like interview cake is going to be is going to be key. If you're just trying to learn this on yourself on your own, and you're just trying to like pick up books on data structures and algorithms. Yeah, you're going to learn the stuff, but it's going to be much harder. If you have someone that is coaching you, that is taking you step by step through this process, that's telling you what, what you're doing wrong and helping you to grow faster, like interview cake does, that is going to be a huge, huge benefit for you. All right, guys. Remember to leave that comment down below to let me know if you've had trouble with the coding interview. I want to hear your horror stories. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button down below and uh, subscribe to Simple Programmer. Go check out our website. Uh, I think you're going to love the content that we have here because it's going to help you to become not just a better developer, but a better person, better human being, and, and to live just a, a better life. So that's always been the mission of Simple Programmer, and it continues to be that mission. Click that bell and, and let me know that you are a true believer. I'll talk to you next time. Take care.